Okay. Yeah, I'm okay. All right. So today I'm going to talk about two of the City of Sydney's most innovative projects when it comes to waste management. Um, we really try to use new technology to solve old chronic waste issues that we face in the city. Um, so one is our underground bin system and the second is our reverse vending machine. So I'll talk about what we did, why we did it, how we went about doing it and also the outcomes and the results. So first of all I'll talk about our underground bin system. As it sounds, the underground bin system is a way to store bins below ground level in very high density space poor areas. So it works how this illustration is, um, shows, is that the bins are below ground level. The residents put the waste in the, in the bin chutes, which are at the top of the ground. And it, so I'll just get my breath back from my <laughs> crutches. <laughs> Thanks. No, it's okay, thank you. Yes, yeah, so the, the waste drops down to the bins below. Um, and for collection, the contractor can raise the bins to ground level, they can roll them off, um, enter them in the truck, roll them back onto the system and lower it back down underground, ready for the next resident to use the chutes. So we heard about underground bin systems being used in Europe before, but we weren't too sure if it could actually be applied to some of our most problem areas. This was namely the, the, real, the real problem that we wanted to address. Um, as you can see, this bin bay, this old bin bay built in the 1980s, was really too small for the amount of garbage which was now being produced in that area. Um, and it really, as you can see, presented a real issue when it comes to overflowing bins, attracting illegal dumps, being a real issue with health and safety and attracted pests and was just a really eyesore for the community. So you can see where it's situated. It's in the middle of an old cul-de-sac lined by old 1920s apartments, about 15 apartment buildings um, in the middle of the city of Sydney. These old Art Deco style apartments were built at the time when incineration was the main waste management technology. So no internal storage for, bin, uh, for any bins. You can see it's located in Royston Street in Dar Darlinghurst, so right in the middle of the very high dense <laughs> very high dense area in, um, in King's Cross, right in the middle of the city of Sydney. Okay. So we chose the Eco Punto underground bin system. Um, it's manufactured in Italy. Um, we got it from our local supplier, Waste Drive, in Australia. We chose this system because it was secure. Only residents could access the chutes via a pin code. Um, it also increased the storage capacity. We, with this system, we could, we could have five 1,100 litre bins stored below ground level. Um, it obviously reduced pets, pests and odor, odors because the waste was um, stored below ground level and below the, below the ground and because it was sealed so that no odors could escape. Um, it operates very quietly and it can be designed to suit the aesthetics of the street as well. And it also just fitted in with the city's overall strategy to try and use new innovative approaches to um, waste management. And also been proven to be successful in Europe as well over the last decade or so. So the whole process took probably about two years to complete, um, from concept development through to approvals, through to construction and post-construction, which we're in at the moment. We're monitoring the system and how it's working. The main takeaway from this slide, though, is that it took only four months from when the system came to, um, was delivered to Australia until it was actually able to be used from, the, um, from demolishing the bin bay to actually putting the new system in. Um, but it was really important throughout each step of this process that we made sure the residents were consulted through door knocks, letters, um, meeting them out on site to explain any of their concerns, just to make sure they weren't inconvenienced by any surprises. Um, but generally the residents were really supportive throughout the whole project. Um, this is a bit of some of the construction. At the start they had to excavate about 2.6 metres um, into the ground. 1.2 of those metres was sandstone, so it was a very costly exercise. Um, then the curb and guttering, oh sorry, then, the, then they installed the concrete base where the actual system was going to sit on. 
Um, then they installed the system into the pit, which came in two large concrete slabs weighing about 10 tonne each. Um, that, would, that actually housed the whole system and the components. Um, also, the hydraulic lifts that the bin sits on was in those um, concrete slabs. Then they installed the curb and guttering. Um, we installed the chutes and the control panel. And then we connected the system electrics. So in hindsight, this is one of our main learnings. Um, really, the system electric shouldn't have been housed below in the, in the um, underground pit bin system. Should have been housed probably either above ground level or in a more of a shallow space. That's just because it's easier to access for repairs and also to remove the risk of condensation and damp issues building up and altering the system. And so I'll talk about that a little, little bit further on as well. Um, but that's what the finished result looked like. So that's been running for about 12 months now. Um, it's obviously a huge improvement from what was there before. Um, we don't have any plans to roll these out just yet. Well, at all, really, because we're just um, monitoring it at the moment. And it is a costly exercise. The unit itself costs $90,000. Um, we're maintaining it every quarter as well. And also because this is not not always the right solution to, um, to, a, to a bin storage problem like this. It was a good solution for this site, but it's not really applicable for every type of issue. It's really a place-based solution. So what we learnt was that site choice is key. This, this, the location of this, these bins was on a bit of a slope. Ideally, it should be on um, a flat surface. So we've had probably in the really heavy rain events in Sydney in the last 12, event, 12 months, we've probably had um, leaking issues from only about maybe five centimetres at the bottom of the pits. But because of that leaking, it's actually built condensation and damp that's actually gone up into the electrics and it's automatically shut off the system. So about four times the system has shut down. We've tried to remedy that by do, doing a bit more waterproofing around the system, redesigning this, the landscape around it, and we're also going to install a pump in the system too, so we can, when that happens again, um, we can pump the water out of the system. Now, it's also really important to monitor the waste patterns. Um, luckily, with our collection system, we were quite we're quite flexible with when we can collect from this area, um, but only after we installed the system we realised most people actually take out their garbage and their recycling on the weekends. So we were able to change our collection to suit these patterns so we can collect our garbage on um, Fridays, Sundays and Mondays. And actually this system reduced the number of days we do collect from this site. Before it was daily, now it's only three times a week. And stocking spare parts is useful because it's coming all the way from Italy. Um, we've, had, we've got a spare chute system and a spare um, pin panel just in case. Um, and our main fear was um, bulky waste. We didn't want, obviously, people to store their bulky waste on the system with the moving component. Um, so we made, made sure there was lots of signage, lots of education about telling people to store their bulky household items for collection out the front of the apartments. So by and large, they do that. We're not having too many problems with that. But um, education definitely is the key for that message. Um, and also, just one thing to note, it's, we gave a spare set, of key, spare set of keys and notified our emergency services so they can access the system in the unlikely event that a fire or something may start in the bins. So, I've got a bit of a, a time-lapse video that actually captures the whole, the whole process that I just want to show you now. So, I need someone to press that. Are you able to click on the link? Yeah? Okay, well, it's a pretty good video, but I'll hopefully be in the, um, the um, notes that you can download so you can have a look at it. It shows the whole process. Um, is it going to play or should I just keep going? Okay. okay. Royston Street, Darlinghurst is a unique street in the City of Sydney local government area. A small tree-lined cul-de-sac, this central Sydney location is home to a cluster of apartment buildings that have limited street frontage and no waste storage space.
Royston Street I might just keep going if you, if you could just stop the video. Bin bay video. On a traffic <laughs> So I recommend you checking out the video. It probably should be in the handover notes, and I'll keep going when I can. Um, so that was the Royston Street project. Next, I'll talk about the um, reverse vending machine trial that we're doing. Um, the aim of the oops, yeah. there we go. Okay, so the aim of our reverse vending machine trial um, was to obviously reduce, reduce street litter of beverage containers um, to see if there was really an appetite out there in our community for an incentive-based behaviour change program. So if they would actually change their behaviours if we rewarded them for doing the right thing. Um, and obviously, we wanted to give another option for people to be able to recycle when they were out and about. Um, so the first thing we did after we procured the two machines for the trial from EnviroBank is that we had to find the sites. Our sites had to um, be in a littering hotspot area. They had to be in high levels of foot traffic. Um, they had to have available wall space that the RVM could actually mount up against and had to have access to power. So this was a lot tougher to actually find sites that met all these requirements in the city. It's such a, a busy streetscape. Um, but we've settled on two locations. The one on the left is Dixon Street in Haymarket. The one on the right is Alfred Street in Circular Quay. Um, the next step, once we had the machines, was to figure out the rewards. We wanted rewards that were economically sustainable, that also were appealing to people. Um, we wanted, if possible, to link them to other community city initiatives. Um, and we wanted them to promote sustainable behaviours. We didn't want prizes that created more waste. Um, so the, as you can see there, the prizes that we did sell on, there was a whole range of them, ranging from large prize draws, so people could go in to win um, a ticket to New Year's Eve or to the Sydney Bridge Climb, um, to instant wins, so smaller prizes like bus passes, pool passes, um, two-for-one food truck vouchers to our food truck program, um, to donations or a no-reward option for those people who didn't actually need, want anything for doing the right thing. Um, promotion of this trial was really important because it was something new to the community. Um, we only had two machines, so to actually test if it was working, we had to make sure people knew about it. So we did this through various different types of advertising. Um, on locally around the sites through making sure the RVM skins promoted what we wanted to say. Um, and through we, this um, 10 cent coin sculpture or installation, we wanted to really draw interest um, to what we were doing. The sculpture there is actually made out of um, 2,000 plastic bottles and obviously it's promoting um, the concept of a CDS to the community as well. So we wanted this also to really harness um, the power of social media so it actually gained interest to promote, the, promote our trial for us. And it did. The response was quite overwhelming. We had over 20 media outlets cover our trial, both overseas and locally. Um, the trial had made it in the top 10 of the city's top 10 Facebook hits with, with 2,700 likes, which is actually quite a big thing. Um, and the sculpture itself reached over... 240,000 Twitter accounts by people taking their own photos, sharing, and tweeting it to, to their friends as well. Um, so the results of the trial, you can see there are over 67,000 containers we've recycled since the start of the trial last July. Um, Haymarket by far is the most popular site. It's because the population density is so much more higher in um, Chinatown than in Circular Quay. And the community in Haymarket really got behind, behind the RVM um, and they loved using them. You can see the majority of the containers were, were PEF. Um, the rest were aluminium. Now the rewards there, it's a little bit hard to see from that complicated uh, pie chart, but the majority, 42% um, of people really preferred the large prize draws, um, especially the New Year's Eve one. It's, with this slide though, it's good to bear in mind that it's hard to compare these equally. We did have rewards that lasted longer than others. Um, for example, over the summer period, we just had shorter rewards available to really capture the summer tourists and the summer visitors to the city, like the um, draw to go into the Moonlight Cinemas, the bridge climb and some pool passes as well. We did a litter audit in May last year before the trial started to capture the amount of litter at these sites before the trial went in. So we're due to do the follow-up litter audit in about a couple of weeks to see if it's actually impacted litter patterns in those areas. 
Um, we did some comprehensive surveying of around 400 um, people about the RVMs to capture their interest in the trial. Um, one of the surveys was a face-to-face -face intercept survey with people who were actually using the machines or that were interested and looked like they were um, wanted to use the machines. Um, so we interviewed 100 of those. Two, we interviewed 300 people with online surveys. 100 of those people were just um, completely random, residents or visitors or people who worked in the city. The rest, the 200 people, were actually EnviroBank um, reward um, members, so, but there were only members who had started, who had become a member when the trial had started and who lived or worked in the City of Sydney area. So we interviewed these people, surveyed them. Um, these are the results. More RVMs equal more recycling, overwhelmingly. Um, as you can see there, 19 out of 20 people would use an RVM more if it was near or close to their work or home. There was a very high conversion rate, even though there was a low awareness. There's only about 19% of people interviewed were aware that the RVMs were around, but those people who knew about them, 42% said that they used them. Um, there was also very strong regular use as well. Um, so 33% use machines at least once a week, 39% use them at least once a month. Now, our RVMs appear on the top three locations of RVMs in the state, the top one being 7-Elevens, because there's just so many RVMs at 7-Elevens across New South Wales. Um, you can see there our hay, hay market machine is the second most popular um, RVM being used in the, in the state. Now, our, almost everybody who was surveyed um, said they would recycle more if an incentive was offered which is great to actually confirm what we thought before the trial. Um, and four out of five people said they would recycle more um, for a 10 cent reward or for a, um, for a deposit. Those people who said um, that they, there were 15 per cent that said they wouldn't recycle more said that they didn't need an incentive to recycle. There were five per cent said they needed more than 10 cents as an incentive to recycle more. And when it came to asking people what reward they would most likely use, um, overwhelmingly the answer was cash. People would more likely, are more likely to use cash if that, if that was the reward. Mm -hmm. um, so we drilled down a little bit further and so, okay, if you get cash, how would you like to receive that? 46% um, said they wanted it directly transferred into their bank account. Um, the next said, 34% um, said that they wanted it Put it put directly onto their grocery reward card. So people really want to be able to have the choice of how to use their reward, um, usually as money. Now, when it came to litter, um, we asked them if they thought litter had reduced in the area. 30% um, said that it had. It's a, kind of a tough one to um, judge this one, mainly because people would usually notice more if litter increases. They wouldn't necessarily notice if litter remained the same or if it got better. So. I think we're pretty heartened by that 30% response. Um, when it comes to cash for containers, there was a very strong awareness of a container deposit scheme or a cash for containers scheme. Over 90% said, yep, they knew about it. Um, and when it came to supporting CDS, 94% said, yes, they would definitely support a container deposit scheme. So the next step, so we're continuing the trial. Based on the success, we want to keep the momentum running. Um, we're going to try some new rewards. We're going to have two new machines at two different sites around the city, one being Wynyard Park. Um, based on these results, we're going to try and use a 10 cent cash as a reward to see how that works, because it seems like that's what people want. Um, we're going to continue to evaluate, and we really want to use this trial as much as possible to help the EPA inform a very robust CDS for the state. Okay, and that's all. Thank you.